to hear and see any strong action to sort of remedy this situation. Well, I want to bring in uh, one of our writers here at the Standard Group, and that is Paul Ofula joining us. And uh, of course, Paul, quite a dark day for the economy, knowing pretty well that um, the basic commodities are on the high. I mean, a bag of maize is going for not less than 150 shillings. Sugar, it's going for around 350 shillings. I mean, these are items Kenyans use each and every day of their lives. People are having to reorganize their lifestyles. I mean, Abi, for a government that really cares about its population, and, and, and this government appears to, to be talking about this, mm -hmm. um, to be able to deal with uh, inflation or to deal with what people really would feel mm -hmm. is when prices of basic commodities go up. Sure. That is the surest way to be able to, for people to really know that there's a problem in the economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, better other things can go up. But yeah. if you're talking about food prices, many governments come up to ensure that this is, is, is really uh, not the case. And this is why you see the central bank is very keen on the inflation. It's put a target of between 2.5 to 7.5%. Yeah. Because the cost of living, and if you look at the basket in that, most of it is food. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some few non-food items like fuel that mm -hmm. come into place. The other things are not really in that because that really does not uh, uh, affect it. Sure. But uh, coming back home, I mean, you look at uh, the Jubilee government when yeah. it came in and the efforts it put in place. Remember, mm -hmm. we have been talking about electricity. It's brought down electricity prices, so manufacturers should essentially have have felt this and brought down the cost of uh, the production cost will have gone down. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we heard about the Galana project, which collapsed, of course. And then we've heard about all these other initiatives that they have come in place. Uh, the other day, they actually uh, zerated some uh, items on food. Yeah. But this one, our inflation keeps going up. So you want to ask yourself, what really is happening in the economy? Sure. Is this uh, food prices, what we are buying today in Kenya, is it reflective of the entire East African region? I was actually coming uh, to that because, yeah. I mean, if you are to go to Arusha or Kampala, or Juba, what's the situation like? Because Kenyans are, tr are trying to understand why is it that um, we are experiencing all this. We are seeing the rains are back. I mean, as much as they haven't been that consistent, but there's some um, sigh of relief to the side of the farmers. So uh, remember, let, let, let us even just start with uh, the question of unga, for mm -hmm. instance. You remember, um, Actually, the most of the unga growing areas, the harvest is in August. Yeah. And, and this drought that we've had, if it has affected the harvest, it doesn't have affected this year's harvest. Mm. Yeah, because we are yet to see the real impact. Remember right now they're dealing with army worms and so on and so forth, and sure. the rain has actually come and dealt with it. Mm. So this drought has not really affected the current production of maize for this year that we are suffering so today. So it should not relate the so drought it should to not, the... it should not be related. That is the truth. Yeah. So the current price of unga, if you look at it, is an issue of, and this is the politics of maize. Every election year, if you looked at, looked at the prices, the maize prices spike. And there's always this, um, uh, this, this, uh, you remember even as, as the as last year when we were starting to write and saying that we feel that the maize stocks are going down, the government yeah. was very strategic to yeah. saying we have enough maize. The narrative is always the same. Mm -hmm. This government, the other government did the same. Mm -hmm. They always say we have enough maize. And they're counting maize in people's stores, not maize that's in the NCPB or in government stocks. Mm -hmm. So uh, government stocks have very little maize and they were able to release it and it was just exploited in two weeks or less. You understand some millions have actually shut down. Yeah so, yeah, so so you find if you find yourself in this kind of a situation whereby you are you are budgeting on people's maize that are in their in the in the in their, in their stores at home mm -hmm. and they're not willing to sell because they also have to protect themselves, then you find yourself you have open, opened up a room a window for export. Mm -hmm. I know this export is actually a lot of money. So if you say like you're opening up maize, most of the time you'll find that there's already a, a ship, a big ship docking at the port. Remember the other year yeah. uh, when we had the bad maize that was brought in from South Africa and there was a lot of noise about it because people are strategic. Mm -hmm. They wait for this crisis. They sort of prepare it for you. Mm. I mean, uh, and I'm, leave alone even the maize issue. I mean, you can say there was drought and the other factors, but uh, the justification of the price is really not there. And then you look at milk, for instance. There's a drought, and milk prices will actually have, have gone up either way. Yeah. But if you look at the quantum in terms of how much they've gone up, it does not make sense because the farmer is still being paid between 35 to 40 shillings a litre. That's the thing. It's so, very ironic. So, so, so the, the milk prices now, the spread is about 100. So for every one litre, the, the, the processors are putting on top 100 shillings for their cost. That is really high up. So you want to know what really is it that is driving behind this. If, if the milk prices at the farm gate will have doubled, for instance, yeah. then this will have justified. If I was a milk farmer and I'm selling 60 today a litre and I was selling 30 a litre before, I would be so happy. So but it's like, not happening. Yeah. Are you saying that um, all this cannot be fixed because milk prices are up, maize flour uh, packet is going for 
150, whereas her bag is doing about 2,500. We look at sugar. I mean, the, the, there's another hand that is playing in mm. the market, which is not an issue of, uh, of, of the, the fair market forces. I mean, so is Abby, it an artificial uh, It's shortage? an artificial uh, kind of. Um, I mean, this is, not, this is a, more of a hoarding, more mm. of um, an artificial market, in that if you look at it, um, uh, I mean, people want to sell when there is uh, deficits. For instance, to take about sugar. If, if there's a deficit in the market, that's the time when people sell. Mm -hmm. But remember, sugar millers are actually closing down at this time when you have the highest demand. Yeah. Uh, so, so you find that this is a whole setup that has created a situation whereby there's this big vacuum. So you find some people who go and import and bring in and make a killing, mm -hmm. and after the election, this goes down. So mm -hmm. for me, this is more of an election finance uh, problem, yeah. uh, where some people are making money through uh, fundraising, through basic commodities, because mm -hmm. it's very fast. Imagine, Abby, if you increase the milk prices by two shillings, the money comes into the bank the following day. Yeah. It's not like uh, furniture where it will take a month to sell, or a yeah. TV set that will take maybe two months to sell, or a refrigerator. Yeah. This is a must but consume. This is a must to consume. So if bread goes up, I mean, today in Kenya, wheat is still so cheap if you compare to maize, yet we are, we are importing most of the wheat. Yeah. So are we telling us that, uh, that the drought only affected uh, maize and did not affect wheat. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of look at it uh, from the other side and I think for me where I sit, I look at it from more of an election finance right. and the market fundamentals have collapsed. Mm -hmm. So people are taking advantage of it. Yeah. Mm. Quite uh, sad times and um, yeah. I'm actually seeing a post here by one of our staff is uh, Henry Oreo. He's indicating that um, the menu for where he goes to eat, it's sort of shifted. For example, he's talking about uh, Nyama Ugali yeah. That is meat and uh, uh, ugali, it's 130 shillings. Maini ugali, 150. Beans and chapati apparently is 50 shillings. Yes, I know there are places where, uh, especially the small kiosks, you find uh, they are either refuse to cook because once they cook, let's say tea, mm -hmm. you find people cannot afford at the price they want to sell it. So they say today we don't have tea because milk prices have gone up, sugar has gone up. So mm -hmm. if you're going to sell a cup at 25 shillings or less, you're not going to make any money. So you find they are saying, no, we are not selling tea or we'll sell you black tea. But if you have to buy tea, then they'll fix it for you and it will be a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. The same has happened. I mean, you see people who go for the extra serving of ugali called ugali sosa. Yeah. If you visit the kibanda, it's, it's not been there. suspended. It's been suspended. And remember, these are the people of Mjengo. These are the people that we are reducing um, tax brackets for. These mm -hmm. are the people that we are saying the minimum wage should go up. Because these are the people that really uh, kind of uh, work for the economy at the, at the grassroots. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, these kind of things, when they happen, you have to move in with speed. So I don't know what really is going to happen with the, with the supplementary budget. Yeah. I, I don't know how that will be able to fix, because our problem is not uh, a law. It's not, it's not because um, uh, there's no demand. It's yeah. a problem with a collapse in the market, and there's somebody in the market that is benefiting from this vacuum. Right. So we just need to remove that unnecessary hand the in the market. The invisible hand. The invisible hand. Then everything else will come in place. Many thanks, Paul. Yeah. Appreciate your insight. Thank you. Abby. And uh, we do hope that uh, the markets will correct someday. All right. Well, that is Paul Wafula, senior writer with us here at The Standard, just giving us some insights into.